Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Captain's Log, Subjects 220713.1 We've gotten so many celebrities that they've started pushing for a form of prison stage show. As the majority are nonces, we're going to reject the request and incinerate every one of their genitals, with all of them watching. Hello everyone, welcome to the Halls of Injustice. Today we welcome inmate number 133 to the ISO cubes. For this particular inmate, I've been holding on to sources for this person since the 8th of October 2020. Not even a joke, I even have an entire Discord tab just for them, where we have been collecting information that we felt would be relevant to what it is this particular inmate has been charged with. I'm not gonna deny, didn't think they'd actually get sentenced, but since they've been held in prison for this long, as time went by, I was certainly starting to sway. The inmate's name is Jerry Harris, and Jerry Harris is going to be here for quite some time. Understandably so, when you get to what it is, Jerry Harris was charged, found guilty of, and sentenced for. So what we're going to do first, as Jerry Harris is somewhat semi-well-known, young, and completely annihilated their own career within a matter of moments, we're going to go through who they are, what it is they have done, the trial itself, although very little was heard of, and their sentence. So to start this video, just who is Jerry Harris? Inmates number 133, aka Jeremiah Harris, was born on the 14th of July 1999 in Hinsdale, Illinois and raised in Bolingbrook. At the age of 16, rather unfortunately, his mother had passed away from lung cancer. He was an attendee at the Walbonsee Valley High School, followed by Navarro College, which is in Corsicana, Texas. Just a thing, if you go to their Wikipedia page of notable people, Jerry Harris is the top. You have loads of NFL players and other cheerleaders. But for some reason, Jerry Harris is at the top. Not sure you're going to want to keep Jerry Harris there, just saying. On January the 8th, 2020, the first season of Cheer was released on Netflix. This six-part series put Jerry Harris on the map. The series itself followed Navarro College Bulldogs cheer team under the direction of coach Monica Aldama as they prepared to compete in the National Cheerleading Championship that is held in Daytona Beach, Florida. The episodes focus heavily on five individual cheer team members and also speaks about the history of cheerleading, which is a billion dollar industry. Because of Jerry Harris's appearance on this, Jerry Harris appeared with a number of other members of the cheer team on Ellen DeGeneres' show in February of 2020, where Ellen had announced that Jerry Harris would be the Ellen DeGeneres show's Oscar correspondent. His appearance was noted for being eccentric, over the top, as he yelled and cheered on other people. When lockdowns began in 2020, he made a guest appearance on the cheerleading theme song, Mascot, by Todrick Hall on the album Quarantine Queen. This rise in popularity for Jerry Harris, though, wasn't going to last very long, because in September of 2020, so nine months is all he got, Jerry Harris was charged by the FBI with a few crimes. Oh boy. And these crimes are quite extensive. So that is where we are now going to go as I've given you suitable information as to who Jerry Harris is. Let's now talk about the crimes of Jerry Harris. In September 2020, the FBI announced they had a warrant for Jerry Harris for allegedly soliciting sex from minors. The case involves twin brothers who were 13 when Jerry Harris, 19 at the time, allegedly sent suggestive messages asking for pictures and seeking sex. Here's one of the images. The boy's mother at first dismissed the contacts, but after another cheerleading coach allegedly assaulted them, felt there might be a pervasive atmosphere of tolerance of sexual abuse either in the sport 
or the companies that govern them. United States All-Star Federation, Varsity Spirit and Cheer Athletics were later named as parties to the legal proceedings. On the 17th of September 2020, Jerry Harris was arrested by the FBI and charged in federal court in Chicago for production of child pornography. Jerry Harris had allegedly admitted to soliciting and receiving explicit messages on Snapchat from other individuals that he knew were minors. He also allegedly admitted to having sex with a 15-year-old in mid-2019 when he himself was 19, according to federal court records. Jerry Harris was suspended from at least one company and faced the loss of several sponsorships. A spokesperson for Jerry Harris at the time denied the allegations by stating, We categorically dispute the claims made against Jerry Harris, which are alleged to have occurred when he was a teenager. We are confident that when the investigation is complete, the true facts will be revealed. On December 12, 2020, it was reported that Jerry Harris faced an additional seven charges involving incidents with four other minors from August 2017 to August 2020, including a charge involving an alleged incident where Jerry Harris traveled from Texas to Florida to have sex with a 15-year-old in May 2019, with Jerry Harris pleading not guilty to all the charges. Just so you have a list of all the charges he faced, the FBI charged him with production of child pornography, along with other child-related sex crimes which included sexual exploitation of a child, receiving child pornography, traveling with the attempt to engage in sexual conduct with a minor, enticement, and others. Understandably, Jerry Harris didn't appear in season two of Cheer, but it is worth noting, episode five of season two is called Jerry, and that was released on January 12, 2020. During that episode, Monica Aldama talks about what happened along with other cheerleaders, their reactions, messages they may have sent or received, but also two others spoke up, two very important voices called Charlie and Sam. Charlie and Sam are the victims of Jerry Harris. These on the screen are messages that were sent between them and Jerry Harris. Needless to say, this is not a good look for Jerry in the slightest. In an attempt to distance themselves, Todrick Hall removed the song Mascot from the album Quarantine Queen. It is not available on any streaming platform. Netflix themselves released a statement indicating they will follow this and respond in accordance to the law itself. Navarro Cheer released a statement hours after Jerry Harris was arrested and charged with all those rather nasty crimes on Twitter by saying, Our hearts are shattered into a million pieces. We are devastated by this shocking, unexpected news. Our children must be protected from abuse and exploitation, and we are praying hard for the victims and everyone affected. Please respect our privacy as our family mourns together. Well, of course, you are the priority in this. With this all in mind now, we should get to what happens next, i.e. the trial of Jerry Harris. So, there isn't a trial this time. Inmate 133 never actually went into a courtroom much. And there's a reason why. It's because Jerry Harris pled guilty to some of the charges. And the reason why is because he reached a plea deal with prosecutors. Under US law, he was facing between 5 and 50 years in federal prison. At the age of 22, 50 years would ruin him in many, many different ways. It's not like his career is utterly in tatters in the first place. It's highly likely he's going to struggle to find work anyway. So Jerry Harris pled guilty to two of the counts of the seven felony charges related to sexual misconduct, one count of receipt of child sexual abuse material, and one count of traveling with the intent to engage in illicit sexual conduct. Those two charges stem from two different incidents one of which involves him persuading a 17-year-old to send him sexually explicit photos for money, the other for the purpose of engaging in illicit sexual conduct with a 15-year-old. No mention of the twins, though, and there's a reason for that. A lot of the evidence was deleted, erased from existence, which made it very difficult for the prosecution to build up a decent case against him. They would not have agreed a plea deal if they had managed to retain or obtain enough of the evidence to use against him. Understandably, the mother of Charlie and Sam, the then 13-year-olds at the time, is incensed by this, and rightly so. 
While justice can be served in some instances, the fact that justice will not be served for Charlie and Sam is not good. And I will, for those who want to fully understand the context, link an article down below where Charlie and Sam talk about their interactions with Jerry, how they both looked up to Jerry, how Jerry made them uncomfortable when they met up, how Jerry tried his darndest to coerce them into things that they did not want to do. Now, as Jerry has pled guilty, we should just go straight to the sentence. Jerry Harris, aka inmates number 133, guilty of a number of charges that he pled guilty to as part of a plea deal, was sentenced to 12 years in prison and eight years of court-supervised probation. Now, as Jerry Harris has been held in custody since his arrest, one does wonder if that sentence is less because of time served. But then add to that how typical systems work, he will more than likely be out in seven years. At latest, if they do what we do in the UK, it would be even less if it's time served, by the way. So really, the sentence is at most six, with eight years of court-supervised probation. The sentence doesn't feel enough for many of us. When an adult takes advantage of a child, the sentence is life. Fifty years seemed apt but we'd make Jerry Harris serve all 50 of them. 